Modern Warfare is a classic series in the world-known Call of Duty franchise. The famous trilogy was rebooted with 2019's Modern Warfare, which is set in more current times and deals with issues facing us today. Today I'm looking to talk about the campaign surrounding Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2022 and compile it into a single video. The motivation behind this is due to my love and appreciation for these incredible stories. The characters we meet are brilliant and in my opinion very well written. The environments that we visit and the cinematography for both of these games are movie like This is done on purpose by the developer and it makes it seem like I'm watching a movie. Some of the missions like the one where we protect the embassy in Modern Warfare 1 reminded me so much of the movie The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi, directed by Michael Bay. And Alex from the same game reminded me a little bit of the movie The American Sniper directed by Clint Eastwood. This is one of the many reasons that I love these games. The stories told through the games feel real and carry lots of weight. The horrors of war are portrayed here accurately to a certain degree. It's tough to play through certain areas and one that immediately comes to mind is the flashback of young Farah being stuck underneath the rubble with the corpse of her mother laying lifeless next to her. It's really hard to see and it establishes a tone for the remainder of the game. This makes for a heart-wrenching video game story and in my opinion comparable to powerful war movies. With that being said, this will be a one-off video and may feel different and longer than some of my other series on the channel. If you would like to see more of this type of video, let me know and I'll turn it into a mini-series where we can explore more franchises and talk about them as a whole. Thank you, and let's talk about the story of Modern Warfare so far. Our story begins with Alex Keller, an operative of the Special Activities Division of the CIA, who was assigned to a team of United States Marine Corps by his handler, Kate Laswell. The reason for this is to find and retrieve a toxic chlorine gas, which is to be shipped to Urzikstan for an attack by Russian General Roman Barkov. Alex and the team of Marines clear out a base of Russian soldiers to secure the chlorine gas. As they complete their mission and are ready for extraction, they are ambushed by what seems to be a terrorist group or insurgents. I got you! I got you, 3 one. This attack seemed to be focused towards the Russian soldiers, however, these attackers kill the marines in the ambush and Alex is left alive because one of the attackers realized they were not Russian, but were actually American soldiers. They immediately clear out with the chlorine gas in their possession. According to reports a day later in Piccadilly Circus, London, there has been reports of suspicious activity due to the stolen Russian gas. There is a fear that there may be a terrorist attack and London will turn into a war zone. Here we meet Sergeant Kyle Garrick and his team. They are tasked with stopping any immediate danger to the public. While in traffic on Piccadilly Circus, Garrick and the team spot a van with weapons and what appears to be explosives. They immediately turn their attention to the van and try to stop it. As the team begins to pull out members of the vehicle, the van suddenly takes off and rams in the middle of Piccadilly. This causes a massive explosion. In the blink of an eye, the air is filled with fog and gunfire. Terrorists are coming from all angles. The Metropolitan Police and what remains of Sergeant Garrick's team fight to defend and stop the invasion of Piccadilly Circus. As Garrick makes his way through the war zone in London to a group of hostages, he is ambushed and facing death when he is saved by Captain John Price, who is part of the Special Air Service in the British Army. Captain John Price was sent to Piccadilly by Kate Laswell, who contacted the experienced captain as she feared for the worst when the Russian gas was stolen. After meeting with Sergeant Garrick, they find themselves in an extremely dire situation. A man with an explosive vest and a timer with 20 seconds left. Captain Price asks Sergeant Garrick if he can stop the timer, but without the proper tools or time to figure out how, they must act. And Captain John Price makes the difficult decision in sacrificing the man to save Sergeant Garrick and the other hostages in the building. The Special Air Service team led by Captain Price is able to stop the terrorist attack with the help of the London police. They take back control of the Piccadilly Circus and they plan for their next move. Sergeant Garrick reveals to Captain Price that he and his team had crucial intel on the bombers that attacked Piccadilly, which are revealed to be a terrorist organization al Qatala. With this information, Captain Price brings Sergeant Garrick into his unit to take care of the men responsible for this attack and possibly find their leader. This leads to a raid on a London townhouse filled with al Qatala members. Meanwhile, back in Urzikstan, Alex finds himself in the city of Aktabi on orders of Kate Laswell. Here he is to continue his search for the stolen gas. While in the city, he is to look for help from the Urzikstan Liberation Forces. Here Alex hopes to meet with Farah Karim. She is the one in command of the Liberation Forces. Alex is able to get an in with the help of Captain Price by using his name while meeting with the rebel group. Farah meets with Alex face to face and Alex informs Farah he needs her help in locating and securing the Russian gas. But of course nothing is free so Farah agrees on the condition that Alex helps her push back on General Barkov's forces located in Urzikstan. Without much thought at all, Alex agrees to help Farah. Now Alex and Farah make their way through underground tunnels to meet with Farah's uncle who has explosives that will take down the air advantage that Barkov's men have over the city of Oktabi. After reaching the surface and making their way to the location of these helicopters, Alex sees the true horror that the people of Urzikstan face when they disobey General Barkov. These punishments include torture, 
hanging, and execution by gunfire. Alex comes to the conclusion that more needs to be done. However, for now, blowing up a couple of helicopters needs to be enough. After this attack on the helicopters, Alex and Farah meet with Hadir, Farah's older brother, as they prepare to take an airbase controlled by General Barkov's men. With Alex's help and the US military, the Uzbekistan Liberation Forces are able to take the airbase from the Russians and limit their presence in the country for a little bit of time. This allows for the US to move through Uzbekistan more freely. Quiet. They'll handle operations in the east after the attacks. Trust. Take them from them. Go, get down, get down! Don't shoot! Don't shoot, please! Clear. The earlier raid from Captain Price and Sergeant Garrick on the London townhouse provided information on the location of Omar Suleiman, alias The Wolf, who is the leader of Al-Qatala, the terrorist organization responsible for the London attack. He could be in possession of the stolen chlorine gas we've been hunting. Omar is located in a hospital in the city of Ramaza. Alex and a unit of Marines make their way to the hospital. As they push forward, they face a barrage of men. Upon entering the hospital, they find even more pushback. The hospital has been completely overrun by the Wolf's men. Dark, dangerous, and a sea of dead men and women filled its floors. At times, they don't even know if those that are dead are truly gone. After killing their way through the hospital, they get eyes on Omar Suleiman, who is about to execute American hostages for his cause. Alex is able to stop him just in time with the help of the Marines. With the capture of the wolf, they begin to extract him to the U.S. Embassy located in Uzbekistan. Here, Alex, Farah, and Hadir interrogate the wolf, hoping to get the location of the chlorine gas. However, a mob has formed right outside the embassy walls, led by Jamal Rahar, alias The Butcher, who is the second in command of the Al-Qatala organization. He is looking to invade the embassy and kill everyone in it if the wolf is not handed over. Alex and Farah refuse, and a raid into the embassy ensues. However, Captain Price and Sergeant Garrick are on their way to the embassy to extract Suleiman to a safe house for further extraction into the United States. On their way to the embassy, Captain Price and Sergeant Garrett get hit with an RPG and they barely make it out alive, landing on the roof of the United States Embassy building. They make their way downstairs to find Suleiman and Alex. On their journey through the destroyed wreckage inside the building, they witness how cruel and evil the Al-Qatala group can be, killing civilians and U.S. officials alike, the butcher especially as he murders a father and son right in front of Sergeant Garrett, making this more personal for the sergeant. Mercy is weak. <clears throat> After making it into the safe room where Alex Farah, Suleiman, and Hadir are trapped, they need to make their way through the embassy's parking lot and head for the safe house mentioned earlier. After battling more members of the Al-Qatala group, the team finally makes it to the safe house where they put Suleiman in a safe room and prepare to defend the safe house from attackers looking to free their leader. After a long and powerful assault, Captain Price and Co. are able to hold off most of the attack. But once they return to the safe room to get Suleiman, they find an empty safe and no trace of the wolf. He has vanished. He is once again in the wind. Farah has an idea of where the wolf may go, and if he is to escape through the mountains, there is only one road that he can take, the Tariq al-Mawat, which translates to the Highway of Death. With this knowledge in hand, Farah sends Hadir and his men to the crossroads for an ambush where Alex joins them. Alex and Farah scope out the Tariq al-Mawat for signs of Omar Suleiman. Many convoys come through the highway trying to clear a path for the wolf. We begin an attack on them in hopes of stopping the wolf from escaping again. The forces of Al-Qatala are extremely heavy during this attack and overwhelm Farah and her forces. Hadir says he has very powerful explosives that they can use against the attackers in his truck. Once Alex and Hadir reach the truck with the explosives, Alex comes to find out that it, it's the Russian gas he's been searching for. Hadir deploys the gas and almost kills Alex and Farah in the process. Here Alex finds out that it was Hadir who ambushed him and the Marines during the first mission to secure and retrieve the chlorine gas. Hadir did this without the approval of his sister and used the gas in the attack without her knowledge. Alex and Farah pass out as Hadir escapes. It's at this point in the story where we get a flashback to 20 years earlier to a wounded Farah who is trapped underneath rubble. As she comes to, she sees her dead mother next to her. There have been an attack on her village and the attackers were ruthless. She is held by survivors and brought out of the rubble. Her father finds her and takes her to their home to find Hadir. After reaching their home, they plan an escape to the mountains. However, before exiting the house, they are attacked by a Russian officer. Farah runs to hide as her father fights the attacker and wounds him.
However, in the struggle, their father is shot at close range and is incapacitated. Farah uses her wits and size to outsmart the Russian attacker. With the help of Hadir, they are able to kill him. They find their dying father on the floor. He relays one final message to both of his children. Can you survive? Whatever it takes. With these words, they leave their father and make their way through the battle zone to reach a vehicle and escape to the mountains. On their journey, they witness the ruthless murders of their people and how evil the man behind the attack is. His name is Barkov, and he is ruthless. Farah and Hadir encounter a young boy as well who is dead via a gunshot wound. It scares them and only reinforces their fear and anger towards Barkov and his Russian forces. Finally, after reaching a vehicle, they are ready for an escape, but they are caught last minute by General Barkov, who is amused that a young girl like Farah was able to kill a couple of his soldiers. After this flashback, Farah and Alex awake and find Captain Price and Sergeant Garrick are there to help. Here, Farah lets Price know she has had no idea that Hadir stole the gas, and then she lets everyone know that Hadir is no longer her brother. The team meets up with the last world to discuss next moves. Here we have Captain Price, Sergeant Garrick, Alex, and Farah. They are ready to kill the wolf and get their hands on that gas before more damage can be done. Farah wants to help with this and also wants to catch her brother for betraying her. Captain Price insisted on having Farah on his team. Laswell complies and gives execute authority to everyone in the room. The team sets out to the wolf's compound where it is believed that Omar Suleiman is hiding. After entering the compound and dispatching Alcatala forces, we find an underground tunnel where the wolf is believed to be. The team head down the tunnel with Farah and Alex leading, but an explosion Ocean destroys the entrance before Captain Price and Garrett can join them. Alex and Farah make their way through the tunnels, killing more Akatala as they go. Shortly after, Farah and Alex are separated, and each must find their own way to the wolf. Alex is making his way to the top when his ladder collapses, and right before falling to his death, Farah saves him. They move the rest of the way together and finally reach the leader of Alcatala, Omar Suleiman. However, they find him with an explosive vest. Farah shoots Omar, and she and Alex work together to stop the vest from going off, and with one second left, they do so. The team extracts the body of the wolf and returns to base, with Farah to target Hadir next. However, before they can move on, Farah is informed she and her liberation forces are now considered a foreign terror organization by the US government and will be treated as such. This infuriates Alex and he pleads for Farah but it falls on deaf ears. Here Alex makes a tough decision. He decides he is going back to Urzikstan with Farah and her army. He will no longer serve the CIA. As he leaves Sergeant Garrett lets him know if he needs anything he'll have friends nearby. Farah talks with Price in the meantime and he assures her this is far from over. After this, we get a glimpse to 10 years earlier. At this time, Farah and her brother and many of her resistance is being held prisoners by General Barkov. He plans to murder Hadir and the resistance members while getting information out of Farah through torture. A bit later, there is an attack on the prison where General Barkov stayed. He quickly flees here. And now we get to see how Farah and Captain Price met. He saves her and her brother and offers a safe passage through the highway and an area to camp while they plan their next move. Here we see Farah trust in Captain Price. Back to the press and we see Captain Price propose a trip to St. Petersburg, Russia to get a hold of the butcher. Here Laswell tells him she can get them in. After that, they are on their own. Captain Price meets with Nikolai, an old comrade, and takes Sergeant Garrick with him. Their plan is to catch the butcher alive and get information from him on the whereabouts of Hadir and the Russian gas. A fight breaks out and Sergeant Garrick along with Captain Price chase the butcher through the streets of Russia. Finally catching the butcher, they take him to a secure location for questioning. The methods used could be looked at differently by many, but to get the job done and break the butcher, the team must play his game. Captain Price has took hostage the butcher's wife and son. With their life on the line, the butcher ironically breaks. He who murdered women, children, and helpless men breaks at the notion that someone will do the same. The butcher gives them the location of Hadir and the gas. Here is where they realize that Hadir is going after Barkov, and in doing so will start a much bigger war on all fronts. Sergeant Garrick executes Jamal Rahar and puts an end to his reign of terror. <laughs> The captain and Garrick race to stop Hadir from starting World War III. This takes them to Bauruchi, Moldova, where they have located the residence of General Barkov. However, Hadir's forces have taken over and killed everyone standing in their way. Sergeant Garrick makes his way through the huge residence and along with Captain Price, locate Hadir in a safe room. After finding Hadir, he reveals that he has the location of where the chlorine gas is being made and he was planning to stop it and destroy the chemical gas factory. He tells Captain Price they are still on the same team and just wants to kill Barkov. However, the lines have been blurred and Captain Price cannot be on the same team as Hadir when their methods and reasons are very different. However, this information will come good soon. Now Captain Price and Sergeant Garrick must escape with Hadir intact and meet at the extraction point. They fight their way through General Barkov's forces and escape through tunnels. After escaping, Hadir asks the captain for help in taking down the lab, but at this point, Hadir is done. There is nothing that he can do or offer to change his future. He does plead with Price and tells him to show Farah the plans of the chemical factory and to tell her the whole truth. Here we see Laswell show up and inform Captain Price that Hadir will be turned over to the Russian
Russian government. Price reluctantly agrees, but informs us well he has important intel and will be doing what he believes is necessary with it. She then offers a helping hand. A little while later, we find Captain Price back in Urzikstan, where he and Sergeant Garrick have come to meet with Farah and her liberation forces. Farah is on high alert regardless, as she knows she's considered a terrorist threat and is cautious on what the captain's intentions may be. So with the tensions high, Price informs Farah about his plan to take down the chemical fab and shows her the plans Hadir found. Farah was skeptical at first, but understands this is her chance to kill Barkov as well. She agrees to help Price and together they begin a covert operation to take down the gas lab, which is located in eastern Georgia. This is a covert operation to destroy Barkov's gas lab. Nikolai is on the inside. He'll provide the explosives. Two teams will infiltrate. Garrick and I will plant charges on the pipeline. Farah and Alex, you'll get a detonator from Nikolai and rig the main furnace. The assault of the gas lab is a huge task, with Barkov's forces attacking relentlessly and in huge numbers. When we reach the gas lab building, Alex and Farah go together to plant the explosives in the lab while Captain Price and Sergeant Garrett head over to set the remaining explosives outside of the building. Everything is going according to plan until the detonator that Alex has is broken in an ambush attack by a Russian in a juggernaut suit. When Farah and Alex reach the lab, they realize they'll have to set the explosives manually with almost zero chance of escaping. Farah decides to sacrifice herself for her people and destroy this gas that has caused so much pain, but Alex volunteers himself to the cause and takes Fire's place. I've been an assignment my whole life. This is what I believe in. Give me the order. You are a freedom fighter, Alex. You're a born leader, Farah. Say the word. Go. Yes, ma'am. Alex is sacrificing himself for something he believes in, a cause bigger than himself, and he feels great pride in doing so. This also provides the chance for Farah to get her hands on General Barkov and finally put an end to his reign. As Barkov escapes in his helicopter, Farah has somehow snuck in and catches Barkov off guard, stabbing him multiple times and throwing him off the helicopter. At last, she kills Barkov and claims a huge victory for Urzikstan. Moments later, the lab explodes, concluding this massive story. As things have cooled down, we find Laswell and Captain Price sitting in a coffee shop. Here, Captain Price is looking to form a new task force that doesn't have to follow the standard rules. Laswell is reluctant in agreeing, but in the end, grants Captain Price wishes. In this task force, Price names Sergeant Kyle Gaz Garrick, John Soap McTavish, and Simon Ghost Riley. The rest will be on need-to-know basis, and he names this task force 141. Here we conclude the story of Modern Warfare 2019. This is a great campaign and one of my absolute favorites in gaming point blank period. From the movie-like cutscenes and incredible writing to the extremely well-crafted missions, not much goes wrong here. It's a story deserving of all this praise and one also deserving of an equally great sequel. Now we move on to Modern Warfare 2. Our story finds us in al as Ghost makes his way through canyons and soon we hear the voices of Kate Laswell, General Shepard, and Commander Graves who is part of the Shadow Company, a tier 1 private military company. The reason for the visit to the deserts of al is a recon mission. Ghost is tasked with finding General Gorbani, who is the commander of Iran's Quds forces, who is having a private meeting with Russian forces seeking an arms trade deal. This would be the commander's last stop as the Shadow Company, led by Commander Graves, launches a missile on the deal's site. killing their target, Gorbani. We cut to several months later and we see Chief of Station Kate Laswell meeting with General Shepard in Washington. Here she informs the General that Hassan Ziani, who is a major in Iran's Quds forces, is seeking revenge against the United States for the assassination of their commander, General Gorbani. Hassan is launching this attack with the help of al Qatala, one of the main terrorist groups that the team dealt with during the events of modern warfare in 2019. Laswell informs the General that Hassan is currently in al Mazra, where he is in striking distance. They immediately send a Marines operations unit led by Ghost with the assistance of Sergeant John Soap McTavish to capture or kill Major Hassan. Upon landing on al Mazra, the unit separates into two teams. Ghost leads Team 1 on the ground to find Hassan. However, the chopper carrying Team 2 is shot down. Ghost and Soap decide to diverge from the mission to help Team 2. After a hefty battle, they regroup and head over to their destination. But upon arriving, they realize that Hassan has escaped, this being a consequence for helping the fallen chopper. They continue to explore the grounds for any clue of what Hassan was doing in al Mazra. Here they find a weapons room containing US missiles. Hassan has been 
giving these missiles to Al-Qatala. Shepard assigns Laswell to find out how Hassan got these missiles and where they may end up next. As for the ones found in Al-Mazra, General Shepard has ordered Ghost to order an airstrike and get rid of them. Laswell somehow figures out that Hassan may be smuggling these missiles through Amsterdam due to their friendship with Iran. She informs the general that Captain Price and Sergeant Garrick are currently in Amsterdam tracking an AQ cell, and they can be of use in finding the smuggling operation. Kate Laswell informs the general that she will be meeting the captain in Amsterdam to make sure nothing goes wrong. Later, we find Captain Price and Sergeant Garrick headed towards a boat that is believed to have members of Alcatala on it. After dispatching the guards outside the boat, they head onto it. Here they find members of Las Armas Cartel, which is a Mexican drug organization. They find that Alcatala and Las Almas are working together with Hassan. A meeting is scheduled to happen between AQ and Las Armas. Intel suggests that this meeting is to move something. After intersecting this meeting and catching a high-value target, they are informed that Las Armas is smuggling Hassan across the Mexican border into the United States. Captain to a surveillance drone. Mize on. <laughs> This leads Kate Laswell to reach out to Colonel Alejandro Vargas, who is commander of the Mexican Special Forces Unit, Los Vaqueros. Kate Laswell informs Alejandro about this and tasks him with stopping Hassan and crossing the border. Now on the U.S. border line, we find Colonel Alejandro Vargas and his second-in-command, Rodolfo Parra, on the hunt for Hassan Ziani. They are a few feet away from the wall separating the U.S. and Mexico. They catch a small glimpse of Hassan hopping the wall. Alejandro and Rodolfo swiftly dispatch the cartel members helping Hassan, but cannot prevent him from getting into Texas. Texas. Alejandro informs Laswell that he will cross over as well to try and catch Hassan. She advises against it as he has no jurisdiction and there is no help nearby. Regardless, he decides to proceed with Rodolfo. Soon they find themselves in a neighborhood with a strong Mexican presence. They must find Hassan quickly before he disappears for good. They search house to house until they are stopped by Texas police officers who mistake them for criminals. Upon realizing that these men are associated with Kate Laswell, they let them go. But before doing so, they are bound by a cartel member defending the house where Hassan is believed to be. Alejandro and Rodolfo are able to handle the barrage of bullets headed their way, and Rodolfo heads inside the house while Alejandro stays outside to guard. Rodolfo encounters a couple of problems on his way through the home, but deals with them quickly. Upon reaching the upper level and entering the last room, he is ambushed by two men and shot in the shoulder. Hassan quickly reveals himself to the Mexican Special Forces soldier and tells him he plans to attack the United States. As this is going on, the room Hassan was in is being filled with gas, and Hassan intends to burn the home down along with any information. Rodolfo is left alive by Hassan, believing he should suffer the same fate as his fallen general. He wants Rodolfo to burn alongside the house. Before the home burns, Rodolfo is able to read a map where it indicates that Hassan is moving something by ship into the United States. As the Mexican soldier welcomes death, Colonel Alejandro drags him out of the burning room. After this mess, Kate Laswell informs General Shepard about the events in Texas. He decides he'll send Ghost and Soap to help Colonel Alejandro and his special forces catch Hassan, who is now once again in Mexican territory. To avoid a possibility of war between the United States and Mexico, General Shepard is sending Philip Graves and his shadow company to land a hand. They'll be able to help without involving the United States government. A while later, we see Ghost and Soap welcomed by Colonel Vargas and Rodolfo to an air base in Las Almas, Mexico. From here, they head to a safe house where Hassan is believed to be. Along the way, Soap and Ghost see how the cartel runs Las Almas, with killings in broad daylight, recruiting soldiers and kids to work for them, and the one behind this specific cartel is a nameless leader only known by El Sin Nombre. Alejandro explains how he can't even trust the military station in Las Almas because he does not know who is in El Sin Nombre's pocket. He relies mainly on his special forces unit, Los Vaqueros. White truck, four under the back. Oh, yeah. Hey, tranquilo. Easy. It's normal here. Guns on the street is jurisdiction of the police. Where are the police? Well, Las Almas has a very serious problem. There are a few here to uphold the law, and many of those who resist corruption disappear. What about the military? Well, because we are well trained. Soldiers are recruited by the narcos. Why not you? We grew up here. We call us vaqueros, cowboys. We love this place, and we will die fighting for it. Upon arriving at the small town where Hassan should be located, they split up. Alejandro, Ghost, and Soap begin the hunt once again for Hassan Ziani. After dispatching members of the cartel guarding the abandoned town, the team finds out that they've just missed Hassan. However, they see they are immediately surrounded by Mexican military. They are not their allies. As Colonel Vargas informs them, these men are paid by the cartel. The Mexican forces are too strong and push the team into the mountains where they are looking for extraction. Here, Alejandro calls his second-in-command Rodolfo to bring a vehicle nearby. The team makes their way to the mountains fighting 
off the military as they go. A member of Los Vaqueros, Rodriguez, is killed in action crossing a steep mountain pass. They eventually reach a dead end and they have to jump into the river. They meet resistance here, but Commander Graves and his Shadow One company come in with air support, clearing a path for the ground team. They reach their extraction vehicle. Graves informs the ground team that they have a location for Hassan. He was moved to a compound not too far from their current location. They make their way over there. However, there is lots of cartel presence, but with the air support from the Shadow Company, they dispatch them fairly easily. The team moves into the compound and finally catch Hassan. They extract him to the desert for questioning, where Alejandro, Graves, Ghost, and Soap are present. They get General Shepard and Kate Laswell to join via video. You're the commander of a foreign terror organization. I can say the same to you. What's your target? Major. What was your target when you sent missiles to my land? Oh, wild guess to nail your ass. So insolent and foul mouthed. You will learn to respect me when your nation sees fire. You are in bed with the cartel, Hassan. If you disappeared, no one would know where to look for the fucking stain. They question Hassan on the location of the missiles, but Hassan reveals nothing. General Shepard wants to kill Hassan, but Kate reminds him that killing Hassan starts a war with Iran, and holding him is illegal. They must let Hassan go. But before doing so, Ghost and Kate Lance will hack into Hassan's phone and find out that Hassan is in communication with someone in Spain. The cartel is using a warehouse as a front for smuggling. Kate believes Hassan may be looking to move the missiles through here. She, Captain Price, and Sergeant Garrick head off the coast of Spain to see if they can intercept the missiles. Kate remains on the boat to provide support, while Captain Price and Garrick head on foot into the warehouse. After searching, Sergeant Garrick finds no missiles. However, they find a map containing underground tunnels beneath the lighthouse located nearby. They head over there and clear the soldiers guarding it. These, however, are not cartel. They are Alcatala forces. Here, they also find Russian weapons. This means that they are helping the Alcatala with firepower. This puts the team on high alert as whatever is being protected here is important to Hassan. After Captain Price and Sergeant Garrick clear the tunnels, they find a submarine that can potentially move missiles. They inform Laswell of their findings, but Kate is ambushed by incoming boats and she is taken by Alcatala forces. Now Captain Price and his team must get her back. Captain Price and Sergeant Garrick inform General Shepard that Laswell has been captured and they must get her back as soon as possible, as her life is in danger. General Shepard informs Captain Price that he is on his own and he will not provide support. He also makes sure that Captain Price knows that this is his fault as it happened on his mission. Alcatala have taken Laswell to familiar territory. They've taken her to Urzikstan and are believed to be taking Laswell to Al Mazra to disappear her. Garrick tells Captain Price they'll need an army to combat the AQ in their own territory. Captain Price assures Garrick he'll have an army ready. Captain, it's better. It's time. Roach, we'll stand in wolf. We cut to the deserts of Urzikstan, and we see Farah and her liberation forces are ready to help Captain Price get Laswell back. Farah informs the team that Laswell is being held at the front of a convoy led by the Alcatala. She is in a black SUV. The team must get her back before the convoy escapes and kills her. This starts a battle on the streets of Urzikstan, with many soldiers and civilians being killed due to the AQ's ruthlessness. After much back and forth, Sergeant Garrick is able to reach the front of the convoy and free Kate Laswell, who doesn't seem to be needing much saving as she breaks the neck of one of her captors. Laswell is safe and everyone regroups. Captain Price and Laswell thank Farah for her help. Laswell informs the captain that she has no information. The missiles were never in Spain, but their guiding systems were. Now the guiding systems are on the missiles and are being prepared for use. The only two people that know where these missiles are located are Hassan Ziani and the Las Armas cartel leader El Sin Nombre. Their only hope of finding these missiles is to catch Sin Nombre and extract the information from him. We cut to Las Almas, Mexico, where Graves, Ghost, Soap, and Colonel Vargas are looking to capture Sin Nombre. There is a party being held at the lieutenant of El Sin Nombre's estate. According to sources from Alejandro, Vargas, there is a big meeting to discuss the recent events that have occurred in Las Almas involving Los Vaqueros, Ghost, Soap, and the Shadow Company. Of course, the lieutenant doesn't know all of this information, and the team decides that that's a perfect way to infiltrate the party. Have one of them go willingly to meet this lieutenant and give them the information that's useful in hopes of meeting El Sin Nombre. So volunteers to be the one to go in and give his information. Alejandro will follow closely in disguise as a soldier for El Sin Nombre. Upon entering the estate, Soap is escorted downstairs where he meets Diego, a high-ranking member in the Las Almas Cartagena 
cuartel. He informs Soap that the second in command for sin nombre is here, and her name is Valeria. If she deems useful the information we give, she may let us meet El Sin Nombre. During the meeting with Valeria, we understand that she is a ruthless killer, as she is interrogating and killing Mexican soldiers that failed to deliver for El Sin Nombre. Now Soap needs to survive his interrogation, but he is at the mercy of a cold-blooded killer. Valeria begins to question Soap and a military commander on the events mentioned earlier. Soap tells the truth with every question, which is valuable to Valeria. However, the military commander has no answer, and an aggravated Valeria orders Diego to kill the commander as she has no use for useless soldiers like him. The military commander pleads, but is shot in the head. After this, Valeria lets Soap go upstairs into the party while she relays the information she gathered to El Sin Nombre upstairs, along with Diego on the top level in a penthouse. Here, Alejandro gets a hold of Soap once again, providing him with a mask and a gun. He must contact the team and inform them that El Sin Nombre is in the penthouse and that they must capture him now before he disappears again. Soap makes his way through the party and heads upstairs quietly. He finds Diego in a room with one guard. Soap kills the guard and then stabs Diego in the throat, killing him and taking his key card with access to the top floor. We meet up with Alejandro and head to the room Sin Nombre is supposed to be in. Soap and Alejandro spy into the room and realize that El Sin Nombre is not a he, it's Valeria, who has taken the name to reign fear over Las Almas. Soap and Alejandro quickly enter the room, dispatch of the guards while Valeria makes an escape, but the team has her surrounded and they capture Sin Nombre and extract her to Alejandro's military base for questioning. Here we get a little bit of history on Valeria and Alejandro's relationship. They served in the same unit but different squads. Alejandro knew, however, that Valeria's squad was being paid by a cartel leader for protection and one day they took that cartel leader to the mountains and he disappeared. Valeria created a power vacuum in Las Almas and she took advantage by filling that position herself. She became El Sin Nombre and took over the cartel. She wants to cut a deal for the information that she knows. Alejandro cannot stand this and leaves the interrogation. Commander Graves from the Shadow Company lets Valeria know what information she needs. Valeria tells the team the location of the missiles and upon their return she'll tell them where Hassan is located. After this she expects to be let go and for the team to leave Las Almas. Don't make a deal with her. Won't end well. It looks like it's your turn to tell the truth. I want the missiles. I want the target. And I want a son. And you've got 10 seconds or I'm going to show you the difference between the military and me. I don't know the targets. I'm a courier. I move things. I can tell you where to find the missiles. When you return, I'll tell you where Hassan is. In exchange, you will let me go and get the fuck out of Las Almas. Se me largan ya. Deal. Until then, you're staying right here. Valeria reveals the location of the missiles to be on a non-operational oil rig located in the Gulf of Mexico. This is used by the cartel as a smuggling dead drop, and 500 feet away from the oil rig, there is a cargo ship carrying a large container. Intel believes that the missiles were on that ship, but the container looks to have been moved onto the oil rig not too long ago. The ship and the rig need to be taken over simultaneously. Ghost will lead Team 1 in, in taking control of the cargo ship, while Commander Graves, Soap, and Alejandro take point on Team 2, which will take over the oil rig. General Shepard informs the teams he wants all threats eliminated. As Team 2 clears out the oil rig, the cartel set the missile in motion. The clock is now ticking. They must reach the controls to stop the missiles from launching. They realize that the controls are not on the oil rig, but on the cargo ship that sits 500 feet away. Graves and Soap head over to assist Ghost and Team 1 in clearing the cargo ship and reaching the controls. As Team 2 clear out the oil rig, the cartel set the missiles in motion. The clock is now ticking. They must reach the controls to stop the missile from launching. They realize that the controls are not on the oil rig, but on the cargo ship that sits 500 feet away. Commander Graves and Sergeant and Soap head over to assist Lieutenant Ghost and Team 1 in clearing the cargo ship and reaching those controls. The clock is running down and a gunfight breaks out on the cargo ship. The team dispatches all possible threats. Graves and Soap work together to rework the missile and blow it up on the oil rig because it is too late to stop it from launching and its current destination is New Orleans. Soap and Graves are successful in reworking the missiles and all active threats have been dealt with. Shortly after, we cut to the team headed back to Colonel Alejandro's base. However, they are stopped at the entrance by Commander Graves and his shadow company. What's this? This is the immediate future. Step away from the gate. What? You heard me. You're crazy. This is my base. Not a base. This is a sizable covert facility. And I admire it. So I'm taking. You boys have been relieved. Thank you for your service. No, no, no. no. I don't take orders from you. Didn't Valeria say that? 
Now that makes me wonder what else I don't know about your affiliation with the drug lord. What the fuck did you just say to me, Ben the Elder? You're lying briefs. Don't do that. Don't do that. No one needs to get hurt here. Are you threatening us? Soldier, I don't make threats. I make guarantees. So let's not do this. They have taken Alejandro's base and relieved the team of their duties, on General Shepard's orders. This enrages Alejandro, who attacks Graves. He is pinned against the car and is handcuffed. Graves proceeds to attack Soap, who quickly uses a Shadow Company soldier as cover. Ghost dispatches two members of the Shadow Company with ease. Soap is shot in the right arm and is wounded. He jumps a barrier to escape. Ghost also manages to escape the ambush. Now alone, Soap must find his way through the streets of Las Almas, filled with members of the Shadow Company who are ruthlessly killing civilians and cartel members, looking for Soap and Ghost on orders from Graves. And to make matters worse, Soap has no weapons at his disposal. He must evade and hide until he is able to escape. As Soap collapses from some blood loss, he hears Ghost over the radio who is going to help the sergeant get through his current predicament with guerrilla warfare tactics, a field Ghost is extremely experienced in. As he makes his way through the streets, he witnesses how cold-blooded Graves is. Ghost informs Soap that there is a church nearby where he set up a sniper position. He needs Soap to make it to that church if he wants to survive this. A while later, we see Soap reach Ghost at the church and they make their way to a pickup truck to escape. They head towards Alejandro's safe house where Rodolfo is hiding. Go, Soap, and Rodolfo come up with a plan to free Los Vaqueros and Colonel Vargas from an old prison that has also been taken by Graves. The team make their way into the prison, killing a couple shadows as they go. Lieutenant Ghost plants explosives on nearby vehicles with the help of Sergeant Soap as Rodolfo locates Alejandro with the help of CCTVs. All three head over to free him and the remaining Vaqueros after this. They make an escape out of the prison, taking heavy fire. As they are about to reach the wall, they are attacked by a chopper, who suddenly goes down. When the smoke clears, we see Captain Pryor and Sergeant Garrick. They are in Las Almas, on orders from Kate Laswell. They are able to fight off the remaining shadows and escape. While en route to Alejandro's safe house, Captain Price informs the team why Shepard and Commander Graves turned. Intel recovered an operation that took place two months ago, Black Bag, that General Shepard was in charge of. He contracted Commander Graves and his shadow company to complete the assignment. The purpose for the operation was to give our allies missiles and aid them in their fight against Russia. Maybe a good cause, but highly illegal. However, the mission did not go as planned. The missiles were spotted and intercepted by Russian Russian private military contractors who killed the shadow company and took the missiles. Russia found out that General Shepard was behind this and gave the missiles to Hazan Ziani of the Quds forces. After this mistake, General Shepard tried to clean his mess up by covering it up. Captain Price and his team were getting close to uncovering the truth. That's when General Shepard had the shadow company turn and try to eliminate the team. Two missiles have been recovered, but there were three in total. Hassan still has one. Upon arriving at Alejandro's safe house, Captain Price has a video call with General Shepard and the captain questions Shepard on his reasonings behind what he did, but he hides behind patriotism and thinks that the captain of all people should understand. Captain Price tells General Shepard he wants Graves and his shadow companies to be called off immediately. However, General Shepard refuses and says that Commander Graves is like a dog with a bone and he would do best to stay out of his way. Captain Price, on the other hand, makes it very clear that after killing Commander Graves, he will be coming for Shepard. Task Force 141 prepares alongside those vaqueros to take back Alejandro's base from Graves and his men. They know it won't be easy as it will be heavily guarded. The goal is to get inside the base and reach Alejandro's main headquarters. Colonel Alejandro believes that's what Graves will be. The team breaks up into two squads. The first is Captain Price, Sergeant Gas, Colonel Alejandro, and one pilot. The second is Lieutenant Ghost, Sergeant Soap, and Rodolfo. Team 1 will make their way through the tunnels to commandeer a helo and take Price up. Here Captain Price will fire at the gate and enable Team 2 to enter the base and fight their way to Graves. Everything goes according to plan and Team Team 2 storms the base and heads towards Alejandro's headquarters to kill Graves. When the team reaches Graves, he makes a run for it. Later, we see the helo that is carrying Captain Price get hit by an RPG, believed to be from Commander Graves. Ghost heads to the crash site to help the captain. Meanwhile, Rodolfo and Soap make their way over the gate to finish off Graves, who has cozied himself up in a big-ass tank. Soap and Rodolfo are able to outsmart Commander Graves and blow his tank into pieces, allegedly killing the commander of the Shadow Company. With Graves neutralized and the base secured, the team regroups and heads over to see Valeria, who is still in that container we left her in. The team presses Valeria for the location of the third missile. She divulges that it, along with Hassan, are in Chicago. Where's the other missile? Chicago. What the fuck's going on? I said I'd tell you where he was. I didn't say I would stop him. Escorpion de la verga. I warned you she would do this, eh? I run a business, senores. We grow or we die. It's the way of the world. You put a target on your back. No. I put a target in Chicago. Now fucking leave Las Almas and go find the pendejos pa' fuera. For now, she's yours. But we'll be back. I look forward to it. Let's go. 
Right. The team quickly prepares to leave Las Almas and head to Chicago to stop Hassan and the missiles from launching. Meanwhile, Alejandro takes Valeria, but she assures that she'll be free in 24 hours. The team arrived in Chicago with a plan in motion. Hassan has taken refuge on the Arch Industries Tower, which is used as a shell company by the Las Almas Cartel. Intel suggests that Hassan is held up on the 50th floor with the controls to the missiles. He plans to launch any moment now. Captain Price and Soap will make their way into the room that Hassan is in from the top of the building. Sergeant Garrick and a unit of Marines will enter through the bottom of the floor and clear their way to the 50th floor. The plan is to surround Hassan right in the middle. Meanwhile, the Chicago police are searching for the container that is carrying the missiles. Ghost heads to a nearby building with a sniper to keep watch on everything occurring in Arch Tower. Captain Price and Soap make it to the 50th floor, but Hassan is not there. He has made his way down, last being spotted around floor 46. Upon entering floor 46, the ground shakes and last one informs the team that the missiles has been launched and it is headed towards Washington. All stations, missile is hot. I say again, the missile is launching. Fucking hell. What's your where's the target? Unknown, we're working on it. Copy. We're going for Hassan. This way, Sergeant. The team regroups with Sergeant Garrick and they spot a small group of AQ soldiers guarding the room. They believe Hassan is here with the missile controls. The team dispatches the AQ soldiers and Captain Price puts a camera under the room to formulate a plan of attack. However, as he is doing that, the door is blown open, knocking Price, Garrick, and Soap to the floor. To the right, a group of AQ soldiers emerges and Hassan makes an escape with two men guarding him. Garrick is able to get back on his feet and fire back, but Captain Price is shot. Soap goes for cover and Garrick pulls the captain out of the line of fire. Price cannot go on. Garrick and Soap make their way to the elevators to continue the chase for Hassan. However, upon entering the elevator shaft, Hassan launches an RPG causing Soap to jump in the elevator towards him. Soap wrestles the missile controls out of the hands of Hassan and makes a run for cover. However, he is once again alone as Sergeant Garrick was unable to come down the elevator shaft. Soap Soap gets to a safe place and is able to redirect the missiles with the help of Kate Laswell. Washington is no longer in danger. After the missiles have been reworked, Soap uses guerrilla warfare tactics to kill the two AQ soldiers guarding Hassan. However, Hassan is able to get the upper hand on the distracted Soap and wound him. Hassan looks to finish off Soap but has no more ammo. So he drags Soap to a window and is going to throw him off. But Ghost is in the distance keeping watch and puts a bullet through Hassan's head. Perfect show, LT. You called it, Sergeant. All stations. Hassan's down. Enemy KIA. With Hassan neutralized, the team meets with Laswell at a bar the following night. Here they discuss the events of the following weeks, and Laswell informs Price that General Shepard has made a run for it and is off the grid for now. But Shepard is not a priority. Although one threat is eliminated, a new one far more dangerous arrives. Laswell has done some more digging on the Russian PMCs that attacked the Shadows convoy. They were ultra-nationalists who are now working for someone new. Kate shows Captain Price a picture and his eyes light up. He recognizes the face. Price passes the photo to his team and Ghost recognizes the man as well. Price tells Kate Laswell they are dealing with a man named Makarov. And this concludes the story for Modern Warfare 2. Thank you so much for watching you guys. Again, the reason that I wanted to do this was because I really love these games and their campaigns to me feel like campaigns that can be compared to some of the greatest games that exist. Stories that they make I feel like are overlooked and they're so damn good. The soundtracks, the acting, the cinematography, they're beautiful, they're well made and they're exciting to play. Um, and the stakes, like I mentioned earlier, earlier feel very high. Uh, throughout the process of me working on this video that has taken me a couple weeks to do um, with recording everything, writing a script, reading the script and making all the edits. Uh, there have been leaks that Modern Warfare 3 will be releasing this year and my hopes were that it was going to be releasing the following year. Since it's releasing this year, I was thinking that I will upload this video so you guys can catch up on the events and then after completing Modern Warfare 3 later this year, I will record and make a script for that and I will apply it and update it to this script and then you will have a the story so far for call of duty modern warfare 2019 2022 and 2023 that is the plan let me know what you guys think this is the first time that i attempt to make a video like this and it is the longest video that i've made to date in the current genre that i am uh, making videos in thank you though so much for watching this video i know that it was long and it took a lot of hard work so a like comment and even a subscribe would be greatly appreciated you can do one of those or you can do none of those regardless let me know what you thought
thought. I had a freaking blast replaying through the story and making this video, to be honest with you. Let me know where else I can improve in, and I'll see you guys in our next video. Fuck no. Ghost, you copy? Yes, sir. Any issues? Negative, sir. Out here. <laughs>